after that fun little history fact, um, vitamins and minerals have a number of different roles within the body. Um, they are not um, a particularly like uniform class of, of compounds in terms of their, their roles within the body. Um, they can be cofactors, so they can, they can modulate or alter enzyme activity, or they can be incorporated into enzymes. And they can also be coenzymes, so the, um, the vitamins or minerals themselves, or vitamins mainly, the vitamins themselves can act as an enzyme themselves and be you know, integral factors in many metabolic pathways. They can also help control things like DNA transcription and also help limit um, the oxidative damage that our cells undergo by, uh, by reactive oxygen species. I'm sure you've heard of antioxidants before. Um, antioxidants, basically when your body um, produces these, these radical oxidative species through kind of excess oxidation and excess um, energy production and excess kind of inflammation and damage and all the buzzwords that you hear, um, they, uh, these reactive oxygen species can they're very, very reactive and react with a lot of things in the body. Um, when that happens, they tend to cause damage because they're reacting with things that they really shouldn't react with. And what antioxidants do is they kind of go and, and mop up all of these reactive oxygen species. And some vitamins can act as antioxidants. Vitamin E, for example, being um, a key example of a, uh, a vitamin functioning as an antioxidant. There are two main categories of vitamins. Those are water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. When it comes to the um, water-soluble vitamins, we have all of the B vitamins, so vitamin B1, B2, B3, um, B6. We then have pantothenic acid, biotin, folate, um, and then B12 and vitamin C. Uh, they are involved in a huge number of things. I'm not going to cover this table in a huge amount of detail. I know this is a a lot of detail to, to go into. Um, I, I, I trust you enough that I know you'll study this in your own time. Um, the, the things to really focus on are um, what they're involved in, if you are nerdy about that, but mainly like look at the foods that they're, you know, that they're, they're good sources of these vitamins and minerals and look at the rough kind of dosages. You can go and compare them maybe to, to vitamin and mineral supplements and and see what dosages these supplements are giving you. Um, so if you are, if you're working with a, a range of clients that may have some illnesses, some of you may well be, then the conditions slash individuals at risk for deficiency column will give you some information about potentially um, you know, the clients that you should look for that maybe have this particular deficiency. But again, treating that deficiency is not your scope of practice. It's, it's a doctor's scope of practice. Um, these tables are basically to give you a nice rounded overview of each vitamin and mineral. So, um, vitamin, the B vitamins tend to be involved in energy production. Um, so they're either directly involved in the citric acid cycle in the case of vitamin B1, um, or vitamins B2 and 3 are involved in electron um, transfer chain reactions. Now, electron transfer chain reactions, if you remember back to so module one, unit one, part one, the bit where we did all the biochemistry stuff. Um, remember the citric acid cycle? We had um, all of the things coming off the side that then I said were kind of magically um, resynthesize ATP from that. Electron transfer chain reactions are the reactions that most of those things undergo to then um, resynthesize ATP. It's pretty complex and involves some stuff going outside of the cell, then back in through some other bits, and then it literally kind of moves some ADP across. And it's, it's really cool if you are a massive nerd like me. If you're not, I, I don't blame you at all. You don't have to look it up. Um, but just when it says electron transfer reactions, it means it's involved in energy production. Uh, good sources of uh, B vitamins you're looking at things like meats tend to have a, a lot of, of B vitamins in, and then you're looking at yeast is an, a really good source of, of B vitamins, um, and then things like seeds and legumes and, and nuts and stuff, dairy as well, um, animal products, and then legumes and, and seeds, generally speaking. Pantothenic acid, um, basically, it's involved in these things called acyl transfer reactions. I'm not going to go into to a huge amount of detail on those, but just 
bear in mind that these are super important rea uh, reactions within the body. Um, they're involved in so many different things. Um, and as a result of that, pantothenic acid as a vitamin tends to be pretty widespread in foods. Um, you're not really going to encounter a huge amount of people with um, deficiency of pantothenic acid. It's very, very rare. Um, if you are dealing maybe with alcoholics for some reason, they may be at, um, at risk of that or malabsorptive conditions where people just don't absorb enough through their intestinal wall. And then uh, you, we, we go down through the, the various vitamins and you can see that a lot of the water soluble vitamins are available in um, animal products and then kind of the, the leafy green vegetables and kind of nuts and seeds as well. Makes sense because they are water soluble. Um, they are found in things that contain lots of water. So dairy products and milk and yogurt and, and cheese, they do contain some water. Um, animal products, again, the, the mussels that you eat from the animals, again, tend to have um, a decent water content. So it makes sense that they contain lots of the, the water soluble vitamins. As I said, I'm not gonna bore you by going into tons of detail on each individual vitamin and mineral. I will leave you to study that in your own time all of the detail that you really need to apply as a personal trainer is in, is in these, um, these tables here. Uh, lastly, vitamin. I, I wanna to touch on vitamin B12 because um, it is something that as, uh, you, know, may, you may have clients that are strict vegetarians or strict vegans. Vitamin B12 is often um, a deficiency seen in uh, vegans or, or vegetarians purely because the vast majority of good B12 sources are animal products. Um, these are one of the, the few populations where I think it's reasonable for a lot of people to turn around and say, um, have you considered your, your vitamin B12 intake? If somebody is strict vegan or vegetarian and isn't supplementing with vitamin B12, then it may be a good idea to just kind of prod them gently in, in that direction. Um, it's involved in a lot of uh, amino acid um, related functions. It's a pretty important vitamin. Vitamin C um, is one of the body's major antioxidants. Um, it's also involved in the synthesis of collagen, which is a connective tissue in the body. Um, carnitine, which again is a, another very important um, molecule when it comes to the release of energy from fat. Uh, norepinephrine, again, is, is one of the um, catecholamines, which is uh, along with adrenaline or epinephrine, one of the, uh, the chemicals that is released during your kind of fight or flight response. It's involved in a lot of, of energy production, um, rapid energy production at that as well. Um, and again, most of the sources of vitamin C, you're looking at lots of fruit and veg. Mm -hmm.